Hello everyone and welcome to our live studio show here on MX Live TV. The Belgian Grand Prix Round 15 of the FIM MX1 MX2 Motocross World Championship. Well this week we are in the Monster Energy Station and uh, just overlooking the finish line here. My first of three guests is already here and that's the MX2 rider Monster Energy Yamaha's Christophe Charlier who had a fantastic third place in moto number one. And uh, Christophe, uh, welcome here, the first time on the live show for you. But um, this year in the MX2 World Championship, it's the best season for you. Um, why? Why do you think? Uh, for me, is uh, the work. In the winter, I work hard. Uh, I work with uh, Will Linden. And uh, my uh, secret is this, is uh, the work uh, hard and uh, after is, uh, is easy. <laughs> but also, in the first two or three season, you had some injuries as well. And, and this year, you are lucky like this. Yes, I have uh, two years uh, with uh, not good uh, result. Yeah. I have uh, much injury and uh, it's very difficult to come back. And uh, I changed the team. I have a good feeling with my team now. Uh, I, uh, I work, the team work uh, hard, me I work hard and uh, it's, it's good. Mm. Some people remember, some people may not know, but in 2009 you were European champion in 250, racing all the time with Jeffrey. Um, but he's taken two world championship titles. Mm -hmm. And of course we can say, wow, you know, he's an amazing rider, but he also has a good bike. What, what do you think? It's the bike or him or maybe uh, both? Maybe for me it's um, all. Yeah. He's, uh, he works uh, with, uh, directly with one team uh, factory, have a good uh, bike, good uh, person. Yeah, the team and, the team and uh, for the mental uh, is uh, very important. You are, uh, well, until, until today, you are one of two people. Now three people have won uh, a race in MX2. But when you are winning, Jeffrey was uh, in the GP as well in Sweden. So before Jeffrey was injured, it was possible to beat him, wasn't it? Yes, uh, it's, it's possible. Uh, here, maybe it's possible, but Je Jeffrey crashed. Uh, Oh. Yeah, and that was in the heat. But in Sweden, when you won the first race, it was a big emotion for you, I guess. Yes, it's my first, uh, my first time I win the one race, and uh, very good. And the track that day was very dry, much like the track in France. It's like uh, Corsica, and uh, like my my track. So when you take the whole shot, you just think, now is is no, my time. Perfect. I, I want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and obviously, yeah, you you take 25 points, and you came this close to win the GP also. Eh? Yes, uh, in the second race, I don't uh, start uh, very good, and uh, yes, I finished three. Man. But I, I, have, I have a good, uh, good feeling, a uh, good... Uh but, but it must give you more confidence after you take the, the win. You know, you can finish second, you can finish third, but to make a victory, 25 points, it's uh, a, big, a big moment to say, OK, now I believe here in the, in the head it's possible. Yeah. Yes, and uh, it's uh, one dream before. Yeah. And uh, my first time I win, uh, it's very... Very, very good. Yeah. And in the first race today, um, obviously no Jeffrey, but you, Maxim, Dean Ferris, one, two, three. What happened? Uh, you make a mistake when Tixier come past? Did you lose some time? Yes, I make a little bit mistake with my uh, bike. Yeah. And I, uh, the bike uh, stop. Okay, oh, in I, the corner? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, uh, come, I uh, kick, I uh, restart and Tixier passed me like this okay. and uh, in this track is very difficult to pass uh, yeah yeah okay um, riding for Michele Rinaldi in the beginning of the season there are two riders in MX1 with uh, Frossard and Joel but you are the only rider for MX2 but some rider prefer to have the teammate but you don't care about this? No, I don't like and uh, I like uh, ride with uh, the 450 because uh, it's better for the, the race uh, in training. Yeah. I want always uh, more uh, fast uh, of uh, 450 and uh, it's good. Before you arrive here in Belgium, 
the, the gap between you in uh, third place, uh, in, in fourth place, and Boutron in third was uh, 30 point or 31 point. But now it's 25, so you're coming closer. Is the ambition now to be third in the championship for in the in the end of the season? Yes, uh, is uh, my uh, foc I am focused like the uh, for the third place and uh, I don't I push a lot and uh, yes, it's my focus. Are you surprised with the performance of Boutron in uh, 2014 or not? No, because uh, last year he ride uh, good and uh, for me is. I, I think last year déjà, I think uh, he's one rider uh, for the battle. Yeah, because also he made some podium last year, the same yeah. as you in, in Brazil, the first and time. And um, so again, for the confidence, is, is better. But um, but next year, if you finish three or four or five now in the championship, next year you think the the training will change in the winter. You think now it's possible to be world champion next year? Yes, uh, in the winter I I work uh, on, encore. More, yeah, more well. hard, and uh, with the team, I have uh, the new bike for next year, and uh, I try is uh, very, very good. So I have I have a good ambition for uh, next year. In this season, where you are having the best time, one race win, three podium. What have you learned, you know, for next year already? Uh, I want to win the, the World Championships, yeah. or uh, the top three is, uh, is good. But do you need to change something for next year? Maybe the, the speed in the corner is, has to be better, the start has to be more consistent, or...? Yes, uh, the corner, very, I, I have this, and uh, the start, it's yeah. very important. But you stay MX2, the same team, so yes. this is a big, uh, a big thing that you don't have to worry. No, I, I have a good feeling, uh, it's, uh, it's very good to continue with Yama Rinaldi. I know you have to go in one moment, but um, at the end of the season, Motocross of Nation in Teuschenthal, the first time for you on Team France, you looking forward? Yes, I, have, I ride the first time with 450 in the race, yeah. and uh, I, have, I have a good ambition and I, I take easy, I don't have uh, stress. Yeah. Uh, and look, you will uh, ride in open class. Yes. Yeah. And um, obviously for France, they have a strong possibility again to be on the podium at, at the minimum. Uh, yes. Yes. Be very possible. You like Toshental? I like because uh, it's very hard. It's yeah. like in French. Yeah. Okay. Well, look. Um, I'm going to let you go because. Uh, yeah, in 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you are uh, the second race. So, uh, Christophe Charlier, thank you for joining us here, Monster Energy Yamaha rider in MX2. And uh, I will let you go and uh, get yourself prepared for the, for the second race. And good luck, eh? No problem, thank you. Well, we've got a good atmosphere here in uh, Belgium. Uh, my second guest is already here, but uh, I saw Gauthier Paulin walking around somewhere as well, fresh from MX1. So if we can get him uh, inside also, um, then that will be uh, also good because we have Steve Turner from uh, STR KTM. So while we wait for Gauthier, Steve, uh, good to have you here. Um, it's been a, a frustrating season for you, hasn't it, a little bit this year? You know, Mattis Caro and, um, and obviously Jonathan Barrigan, but what's your take on it so far this year? Yeah, I think from frustrating is uh, about the closest you can get to uh, the truth. Yeah, it's been frustrating with Mattis because he's shown good form, but then had an injury before the season started, and then um, he crashed in Portugal, which a bit of a silly crash, really, pushing too hard at the end lack of experience I think and uh, yeah that's cost him big this season because he would have been in for the British Championship even missing the first round yeah. due to his first crash his first injury sorry um, but you know I think he would have been leading the British Championship by now even missing the first round but the Portugal crash was pretty bad for him Jonathan never really got on the pace all year and yeah it's been really frustrating yeah. with um before we arrived here in Belgium, um, the two guys were 17th and 18th in the standings. And, um, you know, like you say, I guess to sum it up, a little bit frustrating. But from Matt's point of view, he's showing good speed, and um, but he missed too many races. And uh, also, you know, a little bit 
you know, the injuries from before, I guess, were part of the problem. But he's showing good form now, isn't he? His speed is just coming back for Matis. Yeah, he's showing good speed. Uh, not so good in the first race, then, to no. be fair. Um, but overall, yeah, he was 10th yesterday in the uh, qualifying and looked uh, like he needed a good start. He didn't get a good start. And he normally punches above his weight on the start, yeah. but not today. So uh, hopefully, second race, he's usually better in the second race as well. All right, we'll come back and talk to you in a moment because uh, I want to speak to Gocce Paulan just because um, he's fresh in from MX1. Um, and also, you know, it'd be nice for him to go and uh, get some recovery time because he's had a tough three weeks as uh, <laughs> the Frenchman. But uh, Gauthier, um, from your side, uh, good to see you back in the, in the paddock in the Belgian Grand Prix. Um, Germany, a couple of weeks ago, three weeks ago, was, uh, you know, it could have been good in one way. You were leading the race, you could have won the race, but it ended up a little bit different. Have you seen the crash? Uh, do you remember the crash as well? Um, have you seen it on video? Yeah, I mean, um, like you say, I could win. Uh, those sensations before my crash was amazing. I was just flying, and uh, in one second, wasn't really a mistake, wasn't fault of the bike, wasn't really my fault, wasn't the track fault. You know, was just kind of uh, crash during racing. So that's it. You know, um, that's racing. I know uh, what I do. I'm doing motocross, and uh, that's all. But yeah, I don't remember no nothing from this track, some from this crash. I was uh, just. Uh, uh, on the off mode, I would say, and um, and yeah, I, I saw video like this, but then that just uh, isn't me, you know. It's just a video I see, and uh, yeah. lucky that I'm strong physically that I could uh, I could be back up uh, after a bad crash like this because yeah, those sensation wasn't me. I was just uh, off. Did you bang the head and a little bit knocked out? Yeah, I was knocked out for like a few minutes. I wasn't. Uh, I was just like. Uh, I don't know. I was but this just wasn't like, for you. The ambulance wasn't for you. Yeah, it wasn't for me. But uh, the, I mean, the hospital was really close, and uh, was a scary moment for all the partners, all the people uh, next to me, my fiance, all the team. But I have like a family. It's why I signed for Kawasaki Racing Team. It's why I, s I stay with them, and uh, I was completely knocked out. Like uh, for a few minutes, it was scary. But. Um, before then, you were obviously very comfortable leading the race. Um, you didn't look uh, like you were riding 110%. You know, it looked like maybe 98, 99, and you had a little bit more to give. So you were smooth and riding within your ability, and you were pulling a gap. Yeah, that's my way. Uh, my way of racing. I mean, every time I'm racing, uh, I try to to be smooth. I try to don't make mistake. I try to do each lap same lap, and and that's the way I'm how I'm riding. And I was riding like. Everything I was doing was walking. I was <laughs> getting right, uh, two foot on the foot pegs, and uh, and yeah, I was just um, walking every rut. <laughs> it was just crazy, unbelievable. The feeling was nice, and I stay on that feeling, and it's why today I was feeling uh, again good. Uh, it's more difficult because of a crash and three weeks without bike, uh, one week in hospital. Uh, then I need to have rehabilitation to to know a bit all the sensation, all the feeling. It was a crazy moment the first time I went back on a bike, but still, you know. Uh, I'm looking for one now and um, I'm walking out like, like uh, every time. Were there any other injuries? You mentioned you had some pain in the leg, but was this more like a, a dead leg? No, I mean, I, uh, I don't know, can you say in English, you know, I break uh, the quadriceps. Okay. So the muscle was uh, uh, outside, you couldn't see nothing, yeah, I just have a mark of foot pegs, right. um, a scar from the foot pegs, but still in, you know, was seven uh, centimeter opening, so w w wasn't a, a small, small injury, so, and it's still not, uh, not closed, so when I live back in Belgium, uh, one week ago, was still five centimeters, so I could feel it when, uh, when I'm on the G-force, when I'm on the wave section, when I'm run on the ramp of a jump, it's why I'm more sit than, than usual on the bike, and yeah, it isn't easy, you know, and also I still have in mind, uh, my goal is to don't crash, it's just to stay on both wheels, and uh, I had a good speed first model, but still, um, I think we'd push a bit more, but um, yeah, I want to be safe, so it was a good place, and uh, I'm going to take care, we'll see how, how it goes second model, but I'm here to, to take care and, and to ride and have fun. When you had to go to France, you said you were in hospital for one week, but when you spoke to the doctor, what was the information he gave you? He said, uh, if it was him, you know, prefer if you didn't ride for six weeks, would you have listened to this information? Or did you get to the position where you said, you know, I feel okay now? Whose decision was it, you know, to come back? Was it yours, the team, or the doctor? 
You know, my agent, my girlfriend, all my team was really telling me that they don't want me to ride, and then and I will, I could come back when I want. Yeah. And uh, there was, <laughs> they didn't want me to be on the bike in Locket, and uh, it was only my choice. You know, I, I want to have a long career. We have only one body, only one head. You know, and and that's the way it is. And I, I want to be intelligent. And uh, I mean, even the, the medicine doesn't know really how, how the head's working. So uh, by medicine side, you know, they. When they work with normal people, uh, they say, okay, now you need to take care. Yeah. But with athletes, you know, with someone who's fit, someone who wants, someone who's intelligent, someone who knows how to be back, and, and, and th then people around me tell me, you do what you want. When you're feeling good, get your sensation back and do. And um, yeah, my goal, it's uh, start of the year, was to win the World Championship. Antonio is really strong and, and he's going to go for his seven world title. And, I was thinking like what I'm going to do, do I go to Loket, I fight for the third position, it's a good position, I mean I don't want to say nothing about the third position because I did last year and it's a strong year, yeah. but still but you it know, was your uh, first year, so. it was my first year, now I'm fighting for a new goal and uh, and uh, if I want to reach this step I had to, to, to make the pass on Loket and it's what I did, so I'm back here, I'm not 100% but I'm riding uh, uh, 90% uh, how I know how to like I know how to ride and, yeah. and we'll see after a second model what I can do. Could you have ridden in Locket then? Did you feel in your mind actually I could ride? I, mean, I, I was awaking the morning and said I, I can't do anything. I was just like uh, I don't know like drunk. It was yeah. really bad sensation. I was I was having a black eye. The nose was really big all, all blue. The, the leg was really blue really big and uh, even when I was driving I was putting the cruise control and, and I said to my girlfriend yeah, and she drive me to hospital because it wasn't a good sensation and then after all the exercise I made in the hospital and, and all the special with all the specialists and all the special machine you know to, to make me recover faster the afternoon sometimes I was saying uh, now I have the sensation that I can ride and we'll see tomorrow morning how, how we do and then uh, the next day I was like morning was really bad again and until Friday so Friday I call my, my personal doctor I call my personal trainer I, I speak with with my girlfriend speak to the team and, and say that I, I will not ride because I awake Friday morning I was still really really bad and uh, yeah a week ago when I start riding again uh, every mistake uh, like the rear wheel was sliding and it was again like a scary moment you yeah. know because I was I w wasn't me on the bike so I need really to to know again my bike to know again my body and make more exercise and, and make all the exercise I can do to to know again, uh, to know again how to do, and at, at the best level. So that's the way I'm doing right now. And even for the race, you know, when you're training, it's training. When you're racing, it's a race. Yeah. So um, it was good race. Uh, I could do better, but third, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I was gonna be now a second model. And I will only ride for fun. I know I can do good, so no problem. Before that, it was looking good. Obviously, um, you know. We cannot live in a world of if, but, maybe, you know, you could have won the race, you could have closed the gap, you could have raced in Lockett and closed the gap again on Tony, but the championship is gone, we know that now, you know. Um, but, you know, you look back at the season, you've won races, you've won uh, three GPs, the first two were back-to-back, -back, you know, in Bulgaria and Portugal, uh, and then, of course, you had a big victory in Italy. Um, so it's not been a completely disastrous season, has it, because you can take this now and go forward again as part of the preparation for next year knowing that you have that confidence to to race with tony to beat tony to not just win a gp because he crashed or anything you took the fight to him in, in all these races particularly the one in majora i mean a really great season you know i was only one to to fight with tony pass him and, and win so that's great remember um i know how to do to do that and uh We'll do again. The thing I had, uh, I missed three podiums in a row, you know, like uh, Lettonia, Sweden, and then, uh, and then Finland. But then Sweden had, uh, uh, had a crash, uh, two crash with, uh, one crash with a lap at the qualifying, I had a bad pace on the gate. I, 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 I start second, and then first lap I had a big crash. So then again, I was really, really far away. Missed the podium for really close. Then uh, Lettonia had uh, a crash uh, at the start again, first lap, came back four. So, uh, the, uh, just uh, one step uh, over the podium and then um, and then Finland which had uh, the best lap time and I had this rodeo so I was riding really fast and it was just consequence of, of racing that uh, that will make me uh, not on the podium but I was there and then uh, as you can see Germany I was uh, I was just leading the race and in, in five lap I had uh, three times the best lap time so 
And with this race in Majora, that's a great remember. I like those moments. And uh, but still, um, again today I finished uh, the the feeling. It's good. Uh, we'll see now. Uh, Today we'll see uh, we'll see Matteo de Bassin and, and um, Europe. And there's good respect between you and Tony, isn't there? You know, I know he won the French GP, you won the Italian Grand Prix, and um, but this was a really good moment because a lot of history with Maggiore. You you spent a lot of time in Italy, racing with Martin Honda in the beginning, and obviously living in Italy with uh, you know Ronaldo Yamaha and all these kind of things. But special place for you, and it was a, and a very emotional podium, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You know, when you pass like four hours on a bicycle during winter time, when it's uh, three degrees or five degrees, it starts to be cold, and then. Uh, when you walk, um, when you walk out, and you've been back, like you know, you get risk every day, but you enjoy so much those moments when you're like uh, riding and and making anything you want to make on the back. It's walking, all the technical things. When you're feeling it's good, when you do 35 minutes plus two laps full gas and get good start, all those things are. A, there is a lot of adrenaline, you know, so that's what I love in motocross and that I prefer to be racing now than on front of... Uh, actually, I wasn't on front of TV in Locate because I was just uh, having a headache in front of my phone or front of the TV, so it was bad time also for bad things, but um, yeah, motocross, it's a good sport. And then we have good sensation and uh, I'm loving it. Obviously, next year, um, same bike, same team. You know you can win a race, so... I guess the plan will be just to take all the information you have from this year, you know, uh, tighten everything up, maybe change the training program a little bit, just fine tune it here and there, maybe ride somewhere else in the winter uh, and start the season on a, on a good level. Yeah, every, every year we race, every year we are stronger and I'm stronger now with, um, with all the people around me. We had a really good base and we are building a, a nice story. Uh, um, we are making a nice, nice story of the motocross, so I know what I have to do, where I have to walk. Uh, I know I have a really nice speed and uh, I could, uh, it could be better still, but still, yeah, I know what I need to do this winter and um, I'm look, really looking forward. Uh, it's not the thing that I say, oh, a new winter, I need to train something. It's every day I love what I do and every day, every day I, love, I love sport, you know. Like if I will not be a motocross rider, I will still go cycling, going kayak, going swimming, going running. That's my life. So um, sport, it's, um, it's, it's really good. If I will not do motocross, I will have like some um, like thinking like, oh, maybe could I do an Ironman or something like that, which I can't do now because otherwise you get too, too, too tired. But still, no, it's... Um, I will I work hard like always and to be to be fit and, and to, to have the sensation I want and when you're fit you can really enjoy on a bike. Hearing rumours that maybe uh, your present teammate Jeremy Van Horbeek might be leaving next year, uh, if that's the case, do you know your teammate for next year or who would you prefer if that was the case? Actually I really don't know, no. um, I really don't know, I'm looking really uh, by my side. Uh, uh, Jeremy was a really good teammate this season, he was a, he's a great person, you know, he speaks French, yeah. he's a funny guy and he had good people around him, so um, I don't know, I don't decide for Kawasaki Racing Team and uh, actually, uh, to be honest, my phone was, uh, wasn't off for, my, for the personal people around me, um, but it doesn't uh, bore me with that um, during uh, those bad, bad uh, three weeks. Uh, Okay, well, you're back on the bike, obviously, you get through Belgium, Matali, Lirop, then you've got the Motocross of Nations, uh, new teammate with Charlier this year, and Tixier, you're the veteran in the French team. Uh, what's the expectation? Teuchental, hard pack track, typically French. You've got to be uh, in for a chance, huh? Yeah, the expectation, you know, last time we had a young, um, young team was uh, French Accord 2009, and, and we did good, and we were really close to win those nations. It's a long time that we are telling we want to win, and, and we are always... Uh, really close but never never had a win so I mean um, team friends uh, make good good decision you know they uh, they get some good rider yeah I know for me Marvin it's uh, it is a bit faster yeah but um, I don't know uh, I don't know maybe to have a motivation by uh, by uh, Jordi and, and by Charlie could be uh, could be uh, nice also so they did good to, to announce the team um, Early. Uh, really early, you know, that they can prepare, you know, and doesn't uh, be in stress. Yeah. So that's something good for, for some young riders, and uh, we'll see. But it's typical uh, French team. After we can, we know the station, it's special race, and uh, but we will do the best. The, the French Federation make a lot of effort and give us a lot of a lot of uh, of um, big structure, you know, to, to make good. So uh, I want to thank them also to 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 have my they have my my confidence, confidence you know, and. Uh, 
uh, hope will work for, for those teammates and for myself would we'll, we'll be good. And just really quickly, uh, I know you were entered originally to do the Paris vs Supercross uh, 8, 9, 10 in November. Is that still going to happen or is that something you're going to have to think about now? No, no, no it's still going to happen. Um, I really like to race Supercross last year without training. I raced Genoa and Genova. Yeah. So, and I was. I did, don't even have one one day of training, so now I will uh, get everything, the structure, uh, the perfect structure to, to make some laps on Supercross track and, and do something with Bercy, I want to be there, you know, it's good for, for the motocross fan and for the history of motocross, uh, it's something you, you feel in your heart when you ride uh, in that uh, in that stadium, so I want to be, be there back again. Okay, well look, Gauthier Paulin, we're going to thank him for now. Thanks for joining us here from Kawasaki Racing Team. We're going to let Gauthier go uh, because, of course, he needs to relax, get some food and prepare for MX1 as well. So I'm going to come back to Steve Turner. So um, just let Gauthier disappear. Thanks, Gauthier, and good luck for the second race and the rest of the season. Uh, Steve Turner, sorry about that, but normally the situation would have been we'd have the MX2 and the MX1 guy together and then just bring you in so we could have a bit more time. But obviously a lot to talk about with Gauthier. You know, with the crash, it was a big moment for him. Uh, and effectively, it's ended his championship. But um, an interesting guy, a likeable guy. Um, but from your side, you know, the team this year, Mattis, you, you were with him last year, but you brought Jonathan Barrigan back in. He was happy to be on a KTM, but it's not worked for him. Any idea why that might be? I think really he built up his hopes too high. Yeah. I, th I think he just thought, get on an orange bike yeah. and I'll be fast again. And there's a lot more to it than that. And I think because it didn't happen for him at the first two GPs, uh, Qatar and Thailand, he crashed quite a bit. He was fast, but he crashed in every session, I think, near enough. And I think his confidence dropped a little bit then. And he really, he's never really got it back all year. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you, you mentioned that confidence, you know, in terms of Grand Prix, but in British Championship, Hawkstone Park last week, him and Mattis were on fire. But I hear all the time when I come into the paddock, you know, you mentioned Jonathan Barrigan, and it's, does he actually want to be in, in Grand Prix paddock anymore, you know? Um, is that something you've questioned yourself? Is it something you've asked him? Yeah, he's still talking about riding again next year. Okay. But I think he's going to find it quite difficult because a lot of riders still looking for the slot and um, he needs to impress to get a ride next year um, so I'm not sure I'm not sure whether he, he will be here he's got other options I think as well right okay maybe you are, or, or even rally I believe but you are one of the few private genuine private teams no factory support or anything like that pretty much it's your own you know money and a few you know smaller sponsors that sort of pay the way but how do you do it year in year out you know <laughs> what's the secret because I think many people would have just gone you know what forget it let's just go back to nine to five but it's not that simple with you is it that's right I mean I have a little standing joke that uh, I should put uh, my credit card company as the uh, <laughs> title sponsor for the team <laughs> 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 but it's not all bad though, is it? You know, let's talk about the Max's British Championship, for instance. Um, Mattis Caro, I worked out before Hawkstone Park last week. He'd only raced nine races. You know, he missed uh, the first round, uh, which was a week after Qatar. He couldn't do the second round because it was cancelled due to the weather. He came back, got on the podium in all three races at round three. He missed the next round. So he's only actually raced nine races until a week ago in Hawkstone. He'd scored 199 points. That was championship winning form. Never off the podium. Good speed. That was like 30 points more than the, the championship leader. Christian Watley Absolutely. and then another three wins last week Absolutely, it's six on the bounce now and it looks like he's capable of winning every single race at the moment at the Championship level he's fantastic out of the gate full of confidence and you wouldn't bet against him even at Fowley I'm not so sure though because he's never ridden it before oh yeah he's, he has actually ridden it once before but Watley I think would be really strong there um, it kind of has his style all over doesn't it a bit grassy off camber you know loose let yeah. it hang out a little bit but three races to go there in the British Championship, I think October the 6th, Farley Castle. Um, but you're second and third in the Championship now, some consolation in terms of Mattis at least. Mm. Um, but he's shown he could be a champion, like last year as well, he, when he took himself out in Sweden. Um, it was a similar situation, wasn't it? He, he was never off the podium last year. Five races, uh, five meetings, and on the podium every single time. Yeah. In fact, he's never been off the podium for me when he's ridden. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how is he this year, Mattis? Because obviously, the start of the year when he picked up a small injury, obviously the disappointment picked up another one but he seems to be bouncing back yeah he's uh, pretty strong in the head and uh, he seems to bounce back from injury 
quickly as well. You know, he comes back from like his second wrist wrist injury. I think he was off the bike for three weeks. Yeah. Um, comes back straight in the championship and finishes second overall at Fox Hills. And I think a lot of the riders are shocked how quickly he does come back. Yeah. Uh, I mean, at Fox Hills, I think he'd have won easily if it wasn't for his wrist. He was just feeling pain. Yeah. And had to shut off, you know, part way through the race. He doesn't want to crash anymore. I think he's learned. Portugal taught him a harsh lesson, lesson and he does talk about it all the time and he calls it that silly crash yeah. because he knows that he just pushed far too hard on the last lap. We're almost at the end of 2013, we've got this race, Matty based in Lira. Uh, what's the plan for next year? Uh, guess you plan to keep or try to keep Mattis. Um, is there plans for Jonathan? Is he going to be on your team, yes or no? No, Jonathan will be on the team. And uh, so therefore, who's your replacement rider looking likely to be? Have you spoken to a couple of guys yet? There's a few guys I've spoken to, but I wouldn't yeah. like to uh, get no. the names out now. Mattis has already signed. Yeah. So, yeah, we're looking for teammate for Mattis. We've got the Motocross Nations at the end of the month as well. I'm not sure I've heard a full team yet. We heard Gleche talk about the French. Their team's already announced. America's announced theirs. Belgium have announced theirs. You know, major players. Uh, but Britain, we're still waiting, aren't we? Yeah, my, I think uh, Britain will be Anstey on a 450. Right. Tommy and Jake, I think, on a 250. That's my pick. Um, I can't think that'll be. All right, well, look, uh, Steve Turner, STR Racing KTM, we are out of time here uh, for another week. Um, we'll be back next week at uh, Massey Basin, I believe, the British Grand Prix, which is the festival of motocross, everything from 65s right the way through to an adult amateur class. So make sure you join us then on Sunday, as always, or it might be Saturday next week, because I think we've got a pretty stacked schedule. But join us on MX Live TV. My name's Bill Manning. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye for now. And enjoy the rest of the racing here in Belgium this weekend.